And so here is the following, following is the observation. So this is what happens when you discharge this battery. Uh, you discharge this battery, it, it runs reasonably well, then it suddenly dies. It just suddenly dies. So what is the reason for this uh, the term sudden death? So what is the reason for this? Now, um, sudden death basically happens when, when some rate does not keep up with the rate at which I need electrons to keep up. So, I, I have a constant current condition, so it means that I impose a certain rate of oxygen transport, I impose a certain rate of lithium transport, I also impose a certain rate of electron transport. All three things have to come at a certain rate for that reaction to happen at that reaction site at a certain rate. Right? Now when do you get sudden death? When one of these things is not reaching at the required rate. Right? So at the desired rate, it does not reach the desired rate and so as a result you have this phenomenon of sudden death. Now what could it be? Well, uh, we can do a controlled experiment to try and see which one it is. And, and so this is what one of, this is what our collaborators at IBM did. Where uh, what they looked at was was uh, in a in a in a bulk electrolysis cell. So here uh, you have one one normal lithium TFSI. So you have abundant lithium plus transport and it's rapidly stirred. Uh, and then you have you have oxygen dissolved. And and so there are no mass transport limitations associated with oxygen there are no ion transport limitations associated with lithium plus. The only other thing that is there is electrons. Right? Now here's where the story gets interesting because lithium peroxide is a wide band gap uh, semiconductor. It has a band gap over five eb. So what we wanted to, wanted to see was, was what's the rate of electron transport. And so uh, they did this really nice experiment where uh, they put in a reversible redox couple. Uh, so this is uh, ferrocene ferrocenium. So it's an ion 2 plus to, to iron 3 plus. Uh, reaction, and so what this measures is the rate at which you produce electrons. So the rate at which you bring electrons to this electrode surface, to this interface essentially, the lithium peroxide interface. And here's the observation. So this is the discharge of the battery, and this is the current that you get out of this ferrocene ferrocenium redox couple. So this is the rate at which you're providing electrons to the surface, and what you, what you see is this is as a function of uh, discharge. So that is at different times. We, we, you stop the battery and then you see what, what current you get, right? And what you see here is the current starts to decay rapidly. Right? These battery, uh, these, uh, these discharges are done at 10 microampere per centimeter square, which, which sits somewhere here. And what you see immediately is that same limit, right? So electrons, you are not able to get electrons to the surface fast enough, right? So because you cannot get electrons to the surface fast enough, your battery suddenly dies. So this is the this is the this is what this experiment tells us. Now this of course does not tell you what is the mode of conductivity. Right? This does not. This gives you some hint of what it could be. Uh, you see this uh, exponential decay, and so it gives you some hint of what what it could be. Um, and so we first looked at what could be the coherent charge transport. This is what is the tunneling of electrons through lithium peroxide. Right? So lithium peroxide is a is a wide band gap uh, semiconductor, even probably insulator. So what, what we wanted to know was what is the rate at which the electrons are supplied at the chemical potential where this reaction happens, right? So now, of course, this is the real system. This is an extraordinarily complex system. What you have here is you have a support, and then you have lithium peroxide that's growing, and then you have a site where the reaction happens, and then you have lithium plus, you have oxygen, uh, and then you have electrolyte and all of these complicated things. This is obviously impossibly hard to model, right? So we need to try and think through this problem and see if we can model this in a simpler way. One thing that we can do easily is replace glassy carbon because it's just a metallic contact, right? So uh, gold has a work function that is similar to glassy carbon. So you can replace glassy carbon by gold. And then keep the lithium peroxide. Okay, now we want to replace this part, right? This is the hard part. Now, uh, how do we do this? Well, how can we do this? Well, we can do the following thing, right? Uh, lithium plus and oxygen, two lithium plus and oxygen, electrons react at a certain chemical potential. Right? So on a, there is a well-defined chemical potential relative to vacuum where this reaction happens. And so if we can match a material that has a work function which lines up with the chemical potential of this reaction, then you can, you can substitute that also by a metal. It turns out that gold has a work function that is in the range of discharge of this battery. So we, we probe the conductivity of this system in a, in a metal insulator metal configuration. So these are these are finite bias transport calculations uh, that are carried out uh, in a non-equilibrium Green's function formulation. Uh, 
uh, but essentially what it does is the following. You have two leads, so here this is gold and gold, and so this gold is, is, is supposed to mimic the support, and this gold is supposed to mimic the electrolyte, and so what you do is you apply a bias across these two, uh, these two leads, and so you apply a bias, and what you see here is the, the plotted effective electrostatic potential, so this is averaged o over the xy plane, and what you see is all the potential drops across the semiconductor, which is not surprising. And, and what we can get out is current, uh, that current that is supported as a function of bias. So as a function of bias that, uh, that you need to apply across these leads. And so what we can extract out of this is what is the thickness dependence, what is the thickness dependence of conductivity across lithium peroxide. So this is an intrinsic, an intrinsic property. And so these are calculations that were carried out for lithium peroxide. And then here you have a lithium vacancy. One of the intermediates that this reaction goes through, but what you see is the following: these are bias, bias on the x-axis, current supported on the uh, on the y-axis, and so if you take a slice at a constant bias, uh, I don't know the colors don't come out that well, but this is three layers, this is five layers, this is seven layers, and this is nine layers, and so if you take a constant constant bias slice, what you see is the current drops dramatically. I can plot this in a slightly different way. You plot this on a log scale. So this is, this is a part of log of the current supported at a fixed bias. And what you see is, this is minus 14 on the scale is where, uh, where the experiment was carried out. And what you see is, uh, this, has a, this has a cutoff length, uh, which is off the order of 5 to 6 nanometers. So what that means is, this battery, when you grow 5 to 6 nanometers of lithium peroxide, it just dies. That's not a very, uh, very good thing for this battery. That's actually a really, really sad part of this part. Uh, now you can you can take all of this, all of these calculations, and put that together in a in a in a rigorous mathematical model, and then you can reproduce the uh, the features of this experiment. And and really, the sudden death is basically because you cannot get electrons fast enough to the surface. And so that's really uh, that's really what is killing this battery. 